Hey there, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be, as you can see from the title, all about my 4711 fragrance collection. This is the house that I undoubtedly have the most fragrances from. Um, yeah, I mean, I didn't even bother checking because I, I think it's a no brainer. We're about to get to a lot of fragrances. I should have counted, but I didn't. So I will just put up a number here and maybe you'll see it in the title as well but we've got a whole lot to get through and I've divided them up into collections as well so it will be a little bit easier to follow for you guys this is a super exciting video for me because I love 4711 of course but um, I think it could also be really helpful to you guys because they have so many fragrances, so many more than I even have, and I have a huge collection. So I really wanted to make something that was helpful for you guys if you're looking to just get one or two from the house. Um, you are buying blind nine times out of 10, um, unless you're like in Germany or somewhere where they sell them in person. So I just really wanted it to be helpful. So if you haven't subscribed already, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, and let's get into it. I've bought all of these fragrances myself. None of this is sponsored by 4711, though they are welcome to reach out if they'd like, but I've just always been intrigued, obsessed with this house. And um, the collections are one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I have five collections personally. We're gonna start with the kind of like miscellaneous slash originals. Um, I have three uh, in that and then we'll get to the other one. So we'll start with the fragrance I bought first from the house, which is just their original Eau de Cologne 4711. This is like called number 4711 and it's named after the address um, of their like original building. This is like a very classic cologne. It's it's very well known. It smelled the same since 1880, I think, or 1873. I'm not sure when it, 1872. There's a whole lot of dates on here, but I mean, it's been the same since forever. And the reason I wanted this is I was always super, when I was way younger, I remember seeing um, kind of like in the OG, like completely before anything was happening on YouTube, I remember seeing these videos, a couple videos of these people that had these huge kind of, maybe this is like a, this is a hundred mil. So maybe like two or 300 mil splash bottles of 4711 cologne. And I would read about it. And I, I mean, I've loved fragrance since I was like literally three years old. So I would even read about it when I was really young and there was so much history there and I really, really wanted it. So eventually I got my own bottle and Surprisingly, it reminded me of like Neroli Portofino uh, from Tom Ford, um, which is a fragrance I always really wanted. The only bad thing is like, I forget where I got mine because this is like a very old bottle, but I remember when I bought mine, I didn't realize and I got the splash bottle, which is kind of annoying, but I still have remained a very faithful fan to 4711 to the point, the original Eau de Cologne, that and many of you have seen this, but you always laugh when I pull this out and you think it's a vodka bottle. It's not, um, but it is my giant refillable 18, oh no, eight, sorry, 800 mil. Again, this is also a splash bottle, but it's my refillable juice of this. Um, I have found this in person um, in a fragrance store that's since closed. And I, when I, when I saw it, I was like, oh my God, this is my heaven. Like this is my heaven. So I was really, really excited and I obviously picked it up and this is what I use to refill this. I will have the original Eau de Cologne until my dying day <laughs> and maybe for my children and grandchildren because it really is 900 milliliters of fragrance. But kind of throughout the entire brand, you will see that these are all Eau de Clones. Some are Eau de Cologne Intenses. I think I've like four, but they are not designed to have very high lasting power. 
They are very much like splash and spray. Some are more perfumey and will get there, but especially the original Eau de Cologne is like the quintessential after shower, after bath, summertime, whatever time of the year, kind of like splash all over your body. So I use it very liberally. And I use my normal fragrances liberally, but I really use this liberally. So that, you know, that kind of goes without saying is I will go through it perhaps more than um, another like Eau de Parfum, for example. Um, but scent wise, it is stunning. I think it is just very beautiful, like citrus, floral. It's very um, crisp, but it's not like pungent with its citrus and it's completely unisex. I mean, they all are, but I will say like there are some that are very, very like straight down the line unisex and this it just smelled like it is your original of what I think of when I'm thinking of like European eau de clones. This is one of the first, if not the first that comes to mind. So without a doubt, I would recommend this one. I think I'll choose my favorite from like each, uh, each collection. And then at the end, I'll choose my top three that I would recommend if you've never tried any. So that's kind of how I'll bring it, break it down. So yeah, I really, really like this one. And then that is, you know, one of the ones in this like classic collection we'll call. It's just kind of like classic slash miscellaneous. So the second one is 4711's Nouveau Cologne. And this was supposed to be kind of like a reimagined version, a more modern version of that original. And I hadn't tried this for a very long time because I just thought it was a repackaging change and I didn't think it was like a scent change. Um, but, this is what it looks like. It is a scent change. So I got it. And I have to say, I see what they mean. It is, it's certainly more modern and it's less European eau de cologne and more uh, like shampoo-y. Um, and it's less kind of, it's got less of that like sharper citrus that I like. Um, it definitely doesn't remind me of Neroli Portofino the way the original does. And I feel like if you're not an obsessive about European Eau de Clones the way I am, then maybe this is a better match for you personally because it's just got a more modern take to it. Um, and I think you can own both without it feeling like you're owning the same fragrance twice. Personally, I definitely notice a distinct difference between them. They've got like the same vibe, but yeah, they're definitely different. It's more shampoo-y, less crisp, and, and a little bit less floral as well. And then the last one in this collection, um, this like, it's not even a collection, this kind of like classics that don't go with anything else, is the House of 4711's Ice Eau de Clone. And this one, just by pure, not that I really wanted to get another giant bottle, but this is the 400 ml. It's a splash bottle, but it's only because this was like $11 or something, and it was the same as if I was gonna get the 100 ml, so why would I not get this? This is very, very, okay, this is definitely not for everyone, and I knew it it wasn't going to be um, when I got it because it is very green, minty, like true mint, kind of mouthwashy kind of scent. Um, and it's very iced and cooling, almost like a medicinal mint, um, but but not in a, yeah, it's, it's strange, like a medicinal mouthwash kind of scent. It's not for everyone. I certainly don't think so. And I feel like this, in some ways I feel like would be a nice scent for the house. Uh, so if it was a spray, I would have like sprayed it on, you know, like my bedspread and that sort of thing. But $11 was just too, too good to pass up. So I do wear it from time to time on super, like on days where I'm feeling like very hot or just like, if I'm feeling murky and just like sweaty, this is a very refreshing, like an extremely refreshing scent. And it's kind of like when those, um, there were these body washes for a while that were supposed to be like used in the morning to wake, wake you up. And they were either like minty or very, very orange burst. And that, this is like a eau de cologne version of that. It just completely wakes you up and energizes you. So 
it's not for everyone, but it's interesting nonetheless. And my favorite from this like classic miscellaneous one, if I was gonna pick one, it would definitely just be the original Eau de Clone. From this collection if, or this grouping, if I were to only pick one, this would be the one. It, I'm a ride or die for this. It's a classic for a reason. It stayed in production since what the 1870s um, and I think for good reason. Like it really, really is beautiful and it's certainly my favorite from this little grouping. All right, so now we're gonna get to the second grouping. And the second grouping is the floral collection. Originally there were, I think, four scents, I believe. Um, I just have three. So we will again start with, we'll just choose my favorite near the end. We'll start with Rose. So this collection basically is just, each of them is kind of highlighting one particular flower. The Rose one, it's really nice. The rose one, I would say, again, they're all they're all unisex, but the ones I've mentioned till now have ver been very, very unisex, but this one I'd say is quite a bit feminine leaning, um, and it's a beautiful, fresh, a little, like the, the smallest touch of powdery rose. I really think this surprised me because I've got a lot of rose fragrances in my collection and I love rose, but it, it gets harder and harder to find something that's new with rose or maybe not even new, but just that is exciting for me um, with rose, but I do really love that note. And I wasn't, I didn't have the highest expectations for this and it, you know, it really surprised me. I really, really like this one. I find it's feminine and girly without being juvenile. It's clean without being like um, laundry-like, but it's floral in a way that I don't think would bother people that say they don't like florals. Obviously you have to like rose, but I think it does, it's, it's such a, it's such an inoffensive rose and rose kind of like citrus clean combination that I have a hard time thinking that like anyone would have a problem with it. It might not be your favorite, but it's just so like audience pleasing, I feel. So love that one. The second one in the collection is Lavender. And this one, I, oh, is it Lavender or Lilac? No, it's Lilac, sorry, it's Lilac. Um, they don't say the names on them, so I'm just like trying to remember off of memory, but this is Lilac. Obviously it'll have the name. This one, when I smelled it, I was like, oh my God, I'm in love. Like this is incredible. I'm gonna point out the ones that are very perfumey um, because it isn't something that happens often. So this, the rose one is a little bit, but this one is quite a bit perfumey. And it's so interesting when that happens with them because it's so like out of place that it feels even more exciting um, if you like the brand as much as I do but I really, really, really like this fragrance. And um, I've said it before uh, in a recent, like in a dupe video, but it is like a to the T dupe for Madame Eau de Toilette by Jean-Paul Gaultier, which is very loved. It's been discontinued. It's very hard to find. I own that scent and I love it. And when I smelled this, I was like, oh my God, I'm obsessed. I love it. And then soon after filming that haul, I was like, this, this, there's a reason I love this, I think. And it's, I tried them. I mean, obviously you can watch more about it in that dupe video, but oh my God, you guys, it is a perfect, exact dupe for the Eau de Toilette. And that's a really, when I first smelled that, it's like such a happy scent. And I was like, oh my God, this is so unique. I don't own anything like that. And this is like that. So. This is kind of a, um, while it's a Nota clone, it's one of the stronger ones, I would say. And it's a nice way to wear that scent if you can't find it anymore. I have it, so it's just kind of like double the milliliters for me, but it's a really nice way of just genuinely wearing such a beautiful scent um, for a very reduced price that you don't have to look as hard for because it's not, as hard to find as the Eau de Toilette 
of Madame is anymore. And then the last one is actually Jasmine. And again, I don't know why they don't say the names on here, but this one's Jasmine and oh, they do. It says it right here. I'm saying they say it up here. So yes, this is Lilac. This one's Jasmine and I'm just gonna remind myself of this one. Okay, I really, really do like this Jasmine scent. I find that it reminds me of, uh, very slightly of like real, this like real jasmine plant that I have in the jasmine flowers and they smell so, so beautiful and strong. And sometimes, you know, I'll pick the flowers and leave them by my desk and it really does like fill up and have sillage of just like one or two flowers next to me. And this reminds me of real jasmine flowers, but it's, um, but it's got that kind of like base of cleanness the way the rose does. I really do like this as well. I think it's stunning. Again, this entire collection is a little bit more perfumey and less eau de cologne like, but it's the floral collection and I think it's stunning. It, it's above all surprised me in the most beautiful way and I can't wait to hopefully get my hands on. I think Magnolia is the one I'm missing. So I'd really love to get my hands on that. And if I had to only pick one from the collection, I would say for you guys, I would recommend Lilac. I think Lilac is the standout from the three. It is my favorite to wear. It is the one I love and the one I was really like surprised by because I was like, oh my God, this is so good. And obviously it's a dupe. So I definitely recommend that one for you guys. But for me personally, because that reminds me of a fragrance I own, so my kind of like honorable mention is the rose. The rose one really, really did surprise me in a nice way because I was expecting it to just kind of fade in the background and it's not. I reach for this one all the time. So that is the floral collection. All right, so now we're gonna get to the remix collection and I have remix 2018, 2019, and 2020. And I don't have 2021 that just recently came out. It looks great though. So the hard part about these is that it doesn't say the year um, that it came out. So I'm gonna have to put the names, like the year in the um, name below, and I'm just gonna go off of their packaging because I kind of forget. Um, and so we're gonna start with this more lemon one. This is, yeah, I genuinely have no idea. So this one I think kind of goes back into the Eau de Cologne area, which personally I love. Um, it is very reminiscent of, and I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, but like Turkish lemon, um, their version of like Turkish lemon Eau de Clones. They wear them all the time. It's like super popular there. It's very cultural and they're just like fresh, lemony, light, very light, kind of usually splash bottle type scents. And um, they're really nice for really warm, hot weather, dry heat, which I, I just love. I mean, there are less opportunities for me to wear that in like very dry, high heat in Canada compared to Turkey. But I really did like this one. And I like the fact that when they come out with these remix fragrances each year, they really do smell different um, and a different take. And it's not just like slight differences on this one scent. So then the other one is 4711 and it's the orange one. Again, I will put the name and this one, let's just remind ourselves. Okay. Yeah. This one was my least favorite of all of them. I was just, I like, I think I think the re, I did like it. Like I definitely do like it. There are literally none of these where I wouldn't wear. That's what I love so much about 4711 is I have not come across a single scent, even the minty mouthwash one. I have not come across a single scent by them where I would feel like, ooh, I wouldn't wear that. That being said, in the remix collection, this is my least favorite because it, it smells like um, this, these little orange juice boxes that we used to have in elementary school um, that were like, they came in like little carton, they looked like milk cartons and they had these horrible straws where one side was thicker than the other side. Literally almost none of you will understand, but the juice smelled a little bit, the orange juice just smelled a little bit more tart and um, 
not so natural. And this smells so much like elementary school orange juice boxes that it's like a weird mind trip memory trigger. Um, I like it. Uh, I think I'm gonna be wearing it a lot more in the warmer ones. I kind of got it when it was a little bit colder. Um, uh, even though the haul video obviously went up later, but it, I think it's like that's what's kind of making me feel a little bit less attached to that one is it, it just like brings up this weird scent memory that I didn't even realize I had until I started wearing that fragrance. It's like very reminiscent of that orange juice. And then the last remix uh, cologne that I have is this purple one. And this one is the lavender one. This one. Yes. So I love this and I can just save some time and say from the remix ones that I've tried, this purple one, I have to agree with the hype, is my favorite. I wear it all the time. I wear it to bed because I find it very calming. I wear it during the day when I'm really stressed. I just like when I'm looking at all of them, this is one of the one that, ones that really, really stand out to me. So I can't recommend it enough. It's harder to find because it's not in the year that it's released, obviously, but there are definitely still times where it pops up on online stores like fragrance net and all that stuff and i would keep an eye out specifically for that for that one in this collection because i really really do like it all right so the next collection is i don't even know what they're called but the, it was kind of like the wandering collection i'll have to put the name up but it was these fragrances that were of different places um and they were autoclone intenses so i was always really intrigued by this collection online and i have four out of the five so we're going to get into it and as is the way, my least favorite is the one that I happen to find in the larger bottle and the rest of the three are in their smaller bottles, but it's fine. Um, this is Waking Woods of Scandinavia. So you'll see they're kind of in these like textured bottles now, um, which I really love this textured bottle. And yeah, this is the larger bottle. So this is the 170 mil. And personally, it's my least favorite of the collection because, and one of my, one of my least favorite out of all of them, but it's, I still really like the scent. Let me explain. So this is very, very, very reminiscent of um, Terre d'Armes Eau de Toilette. But the reason I love Terre d'Armes Eau de Toilette is because it has that kind of like bitter orange in the beginning like this does, but then it goes into like this beautiful, like whatever woodiness and the sillage on Terre d'Armes is what makes it for me. That is one of my top three, if not my favorite sillage ever on a fragrance. Every time I wear it, it continues to surprise me and make me love that scent more. And this smells like the opening because it's an eau de clone, even though it's an intense, like it's only like 15 minutes stronger or something. But then it fades so quickly, which usually I don't mind, but it never gets to the place that the eau de toilette, the, the Terre d'Armes eau de toilette can get. So unfortunately, it's just kind of like a worst version of a fragrance I already love in my collection. That being said, if you really like the opening of that scent and you want an eau de clone, or if you know you like kind of like a bitter orange woodiness, um, you'll love it. And it, it is a great scent, don't get me wrong, but it's just, it's like, for my collection's sake, I reach for it the least because if I'm in the mood for that scent, I'm gonna go for the one that I know is gonna last longer, A, but also has that sillage that I just go mad for. So that is the first one. Then we're gonna go to Floral Fields of Ireland, of Ireland, sorry. And I just love these names. This one is again, venturing more so in the perfumey area. I'm gonna spray a little more. I really like it though. The only thing I'll say is it's got a little bit, and I'm not even sure if it has it in the scent, but it's got a bit of um, giving me like lily, airy floral. And sometimes if I'm not careful, it can smell a little bit like murky on me and i hate when fragrances get murky so it really is more of like a when i'm in the mood for it kind of thing but when i am in the mood for it this really hits the nail on the head so i would say if you if you like for example if you like ralph lauren blue 
that has lotus and that goes murky on me but if you love that i feel like you would like floral fields and island not that they smell the same but they give me off that they give off that same vibe and if you're into that then you're definitely going to be into this but for me i gotta wait for that mood to come around and then you know i'll reach for this or ralph lauren bloom so then we move on to pure breeze of himalaya and i was really excited about this one so we're gonna spray it i love this color it's a soft cornflower blue and cornflower blue is one of my favorite colors and it did not disappoint this is again one of those scents where i'm like where have you been all my life i just can't get enough of it and this really does toe the line between eau de cologne and perfumey in one of the best ways that i've tried in 47 11. i think it's so unique where it's fresh and clean where it almost smells like it could be like sea cotton by bath and body works but then it's got like a crisp that citrus that only like 47 11 can do and i'm like oh no but maybe it's not it's a more interesting sea cotton type scent and so that's what i'll say is if you like that kind of sea cotton scent that that used to be made by bath and body works i don't think they still make that scent but if you like that og scent but you also like fresh like clean citrusy scents that's like the perfect combination of both and then my favorite from this kind of like eau de cologne intense range of all the locations is actually sunny seaside of zanzibar and this is a very perfumey one, but oh my God, you guys, this 4711 doesn't venture into the coconut world. And this, I was so intrigued when they did and it's stunning. It is just beach time, coconut cocktail, like virgin cocktail, cause it's not boozy. Oh my God, it's delicious. It's just yummy it transports you to the caribbean without like another thought in the world i j i just love this one this is the kind of scent where like i actively have to stop myself from just drowning myself in because i tell you a good coconut scent can really change my day from like zero to a hundred and make it so much better i i die for a good coconut and this is one of my favorites and i cannot wait to go away somewhere beautiful and warm and tropical and take that one with me. All right, so now we're gonna get to the last collection and the largest collection within 4711 that I have. And those are what I call like the OGs, not to be confused with like the originals miscellaneous that I started with, but the OGs, which to me are, is the collection that, or the fragrances that most people are familiar with outside of like just the original or the clone these are the ones that people find the most they are the most of and that they're the most readily available so what they are and whatever you know they can come in different sizes but they can either they are the textured bottles either in the small or the larger ones that are highlighting two scents or two notes rather and those are really the only ones that are listed you might be able to pick up more you might be able to just pick up those but essentially it's like blank and blank and they're the actual collection i think is like aqua colonia because they're the, those are i think the only ones that say that but yeah we're just gonna get into it i have nine i have four of the smaller ones five of the bigger ones and We'll just go through them and then I'll tell you my favorite out of all of them at the end. So the first one, which is one of the ones I wanted the most, was white peach and coriander. And I I love this one. Peach is one of my favorite notes. Um, I adore a peach fragrance. This is, you think it's going to go in the fuzzy peach area, which it kind of like it almost goes there and then it actually is a lot more... Uh, fresh, obviously a little tart, not green with the coriander, but I feel like it gives it some maturity and it doesn't get like candied in any way. I think it's a stunner. Um, it's it's called white peach and coriander, just in case I said normal peach. I think it's a stunner. I think it's a really, really nice one. Out of all of my fragrances though, that I will say that this one tends to stick around no, I don't want to say the least, but in the category of the least, like none of them have amazing lasting power. Like I mentioned, I don't 
care about that and nor should you judge them on that but that one I notice unfortunately it sticks around a little less than even others which is a shame but scent wise totally totally love then we've got lemon ginger and I'll spray it here oh my god this one this one really does take me and th these are like very specific examples but I swear this one takes me straight to Spain. If you've ever been to Spain or you're from there, I'm sure this happens in other countries too, but um, there are these ice creams that they sell in restaurants where they like empty out like a half lemon and the lemon ice cream, it's more like lemon sorbet, is served frozen inside that lemon and it just has like a very fresh tart taste to it the sorbet and this you know it's mixed in with that ginger so it's got like zing to it this is this has ginger obviously that's what it reminds me of it smells exactly like the lemon sorbets that are frozen into those half lemons and they come like straight out of the freezer so it's like they're super super cold and i love it so that it's great i think um it's very completely unisex honestly and it can cut through heat in a really great way then we've got pink pepper and grapefruit. And I'm gonna just remind myself of this one. Right, okay, so what I liked about this is that it actually does have the scent of grapefruit because I have a pet peeve of fragrances that say they have grapefruit and it doesn't happen very often, but that say they smell like grapefruit but actually just smell like orange or other citrus or bergamot. and Grapefruit smells very distinctly like grapefruit. If you've ever, like I adore grapefruit. I eat like grapefruit halves all the time, just like by themselves. I love mixing grapefruit with like sparkling water or just flat water. I really, really like it. And it has a bitterness to it and like an earthiness that isn't the same as orange or mandarin or lemon or bergamot. Like it's very unique to grapefruit. And this does smell like grapefruit. And the best part is, I don't really know about pink pepper because I don't get any of that and it's not my favorite note, but whatever that other note is, to me, actually smells like, um, I wanna say musk, honestly, because this, once that grapefruit blast kind of like subsides a little bit, it actually gets really beautifully soft on the skin and it doesn't have a pepperiness at all to it. This to me is more like grapefruit and musk um personally and that's just what i mean of like sometimes you might get something else so if you don't like pink pepper like me do not let that scare you off because i think that's actually a really like surprisingly good one then we get to lime and nutmeg the best part is i can just keep spraying them pretty much on top of each other because they fade so quickly and this is taking like hours to film um i like this one i was expecting to like this one more this is lime and nutmeg in case I um, didn't mention. I was, in, I was expecting to like this one more because these are two notes that I love and two things that I love the smell of like in real life as well, like just outside of fragrances. And it can go kind of green on me in a bad way. I don't know if it's like the combination of both isn't my favorite and it's quite quite a bit more masculine leaning i would say it's unisex but i feel like the, it just gets like bitter it bitter earthy and like kind of a in a way i don't enjoy as much i'll say okay i need to breeze through these we've made it through four the next one is lychee and white mint so here's the tea on this one i was so excited for this you guys so excited lychee adore white mint love and what disappointed me about this one is how little if at all the lychee is there like i feel like i get some citrus some sweeter citrus which is like trying to be lychee i to my nose i genuinely don't get it and then those white um, mints that you'll get at like Chinese restaurants or a lot of restaurants that are just like pre-packaged white mints at the end of your meal. It does smell like that. 
and it is nice i just feel like again this is more of like a white mint and bergamot and maybe like mandarin or something i don't really get lychee per se um so i get half of it but not the full thing and i would have rather had more of that lychee rather than going straight smack into white mint all right so the next one is blood orange and basil so let's just spray this one so now you'll see obviously these are the larger bottles this one i surprisingly loved i was thinking that this was going to be one of my least favorites um, when i hauled it and i was like oh i'm just like never really going to reach for it and we're going to get to another mandarin one um that yeah uh i got as well and i'm like this is going to be my less like oh I, I have like a mandarin one sorry and then like this was blood orange and what i'll say is it doesn't i don't know it's hard to explain why i think this is better than the other one and maybe we'll we'll smell that one next but if i was only going to get one this is the one i'd get and i think what really sets it apart is this lasts a bit better and it has an inclination to to stick around in i don't know like a more per, i don't even want to say perfumey but like stick around in a more like complex way where i'm like okay this is this is nice and then there's like a little bit of sillage and it smells a little bit different like it's more of a complex scent than many of the other ones and especially in the aqua colonia range i don't think they're particularly like masterpiece type scents by any means like less so than even the other ones because they're just pretty simple um a lot of them are but this one i really i think it's a really really nice one and i wear it to bed a lot um and i spray it kind of like on my pillows too because i just think it's really soothing and nice and like earthy and i really like it so the other one okay so this is mandarin and cardamom and i was I was always thinking like, oh, I'm going to prefer this one to the blood orange. And I don't. And the reason is this again, in, in some ways, just starts to remind me of fruit juice um, that, and I don't get cardamom, but it's, it reminds me of like fruit juice and pine trees, like buying christmas trees real christmas trees and smelling mandarin fruit juice and it's not that it's not that like one or the other i would say if you like the smell of pine trees and i don't know why i get pine in this seeing as it wasn't one of the two notes but if you like the smell of pine trees then go for it i know a lot of people are like obsessed with candles that smell like christmas trees or are into more holiday type scents I've never been super drawn to pine um, as a scent, even like during Christmas, I'm not super into pine. And that for whatever reason goes in like the pine area for me. So between this and the blood orange and basil, I would go blood orange and basil. Then we get to these last two. So, okay, I'm going to go with the more disappointing one first. This one was so disappointing. This is saffron and iris. This is the one I held above all others. I was obsessed with getting and it's not that it was disappointing because I don't like the scent. I actually love the scent. But when I tell you this does not smell neither like saffron nor like iris, to me, it really doesn't. Iris maybe like a particular, like a Iris in an Iris Prima by Penhaligon's kind of way. Not a papery Iris and not a, like a powdery makeup-y Iris, not like a lipsticky Iris, just like a, like the closest one I can compare to is maybe Iris Prima, but saffron is a very distinct smell and it's not in this. And it kind of smells like maybe Iris and myrrh and, and bergamot and yeah i don't know I, I do get iris but the saffron really was what i was most excited about between the two and it was just disappointing in that way that i i don't think it smells like saffron at all and 
it was more disappointing for that one compared to other ones where I couldn't smell a note because it was just something that I was like super looking forward to. Uh, forward to. It's like as if, if the Zanzibar one didn't have coconut, like that's what I was looking forward to smelling. So anyways, that's that. And then we've got myrrh and kumquat, which I was really excited to smell and happy to report it. I do get myrrh. I don't know if I'm that well versed in kumquat to be able to pick it out. Uh, I haven't had it that many times, so I don't know. Um, I would say it is a really nice myrrh scent that isn't like resinous and deep because I feel like myrrh is usually with like amber and vanilla and this is like the most refreshing myrrh I've ever smelled um, and refreshing and myrrh don't usually go together in my mind. So I actually really, really do like that one. And I would say out of all of these kind of aqua colonia ones, if I was only going to get one or recommend one, I actually would really recommend myrrh and kumquat because I think it's, it's intriguing. It's nice. It's one of the more unique ones, whereas like lime and ginger I love, but it's it's much more safe. And this I feel like is one of the more intriguing ones, but also is you know, well done. Cause saffron and iris, if it had the saffron, it would have been like maybe chef's kiss, but, but out of the more intriguing ones, I would choose myrrh and kumquat. All right. So those were all the 47 love and fragrances I have. Oh my goodness. Those were a whole lot. I showed you my favorite from each collection, but I promised I'd give my top three. So if I was going to tell you guys go out there and just get these three. These would be my thought top three in no particular order. The original Eau de Cologne 4711 absolutely recommend. It is a stunner. It is a classic for a reason. The um, 4711, the lavender one. I just think it's stunning. I think it's really well made. I think it's the best out of the remixes so far. And it really does deserve the hype it gets. And finally, the last one would be Sunny Seaside of Zanzibar. What a stun. I have to respray. I have to. What a stunning coconut mocktail, just Caribbean getaway in a scent. I absolutely love it and I cannot recommend it enough. There are so many scents that I would like from the collection. So I, you know, I keep an eye out. There's like a, there's a cotton and almond one and matcha and frangipani that those two really come to mind of me just keeping an eye out. But Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you've tried any of these 4711 fragrances or any of the ones I even haven't mentioned, please leave me a comment below. I love to hear about these fragrances um, from anyone, so I'd love to hear about them from you. Don't forget to like this video, comment below, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.